Uh, good, good afternoon and welcome to our webinar on accessing financial support for your business uh, at this very difficult time. Or in other words, uh, the free money that's available for you to plan, to save, stabilize, stabilize and, and grow your business. Uh, today we're joined by financial consultant Derek Lowry of Almiga Business Consultants and Richie Walsh of the Waterford Local Enterprise Office. Uh, who are going to advise us on how to get this free money. Uh, as you're aware, we've been working very closely with the LEO on promoting the business continuity voucher. So please contact me directly after this session if you'd like to ap apply and if, if you feel that would be of use to your business. As always, uh, if you have any questions, you can type them in uh, on, on, uh, during, during uh, the conversation. So um, I'll hand you now over to Derek and Richie and please stay safe. Great, Th thanks Gerald. Um, just to go through, I suppose this webinar has come about on the back of the article uh, in relation to supports that appeared in the network magazine. So I'm just gonna share that article with everyone now so you, in, for people who haven't seen it or if you want to use it as a reference point um, during our discussion. One of the interesting um, items that popped up for me when we were preparing this webinar is that article is only a couple of weeks old and already um, there's some elements of it that need to be updated. So it just shows how fluid and how quickly things are moving uh, for everybody. Um, so I'm just gonna share the article now so everyone can see it there. Um, really the objective of this webinar is to help your business assess what supports are available for you and give you some understanding of them and also to look at maybe when you you should be applying for them. Um, to be fair, the government response has been quite comprehensive, so there is a significant number of supports available to businesses. Um, so we're just going to, I suppose, just help people decide what, you know, what might suit my business best and when I should apply for it. And um, we've broken it down into effectively three phases, as you'll see from the heading of the webinar, which is phase one, which is save my business, phase two, which is stabilize the business, and phase three, grow or commence to retrade. So if I just look at the supports that might be applicable to the phase one, the save the business phase, and this is effectively, I think, what everybody has been doing for the last four to six weeks, dealing with the shock of maybe a business closure or reduced trading and how they, work, how they can work through it and, and keep their business going uh, when they come out of it. Um, I think the first support, obviously, that, that was there and uh, that everyone was probably aware of is the employee supports. So there's three employee supports that were available. There was the, the COVID-19 pandemic unemployment payment. So if an employee was temporarily laid off, um, they were able to claim up to 350 euros a week. Then that was um, the next scheme that came along was the temporary wage subsidy scheme that was administered by revenue. Now, obviously, um, there was a lot, I, people were finding that reasonably difficult to access at the start, and there was a lot of queries on it. And I know Chamber ran a number of webinars and a number of bodies came out with advice. But, but the view is that a lot of people are now accessing that. Over 50,000 employers have signed up to the temporary wage subsidy scheme. And this week, there was 865,000 people either receiving the pandemic payment or the temporary wage scheme. Um, I also note that there is some updates coming on that scheme from the 4th of May where workers who are paid less than 412 euros, the amount of refund available to employers to continue to pay them will be um, increased to 85%. And um, also, um, if people are put on short, short term, but continue short time, but are continuing to work during this period, there are supports available, available to them for that. Um, moving on then, Revenue also brought out a number of supports to help businesses through this period. Um, the first one was in, in relation to the tax returns where they, they allowed people to file their January, February VAT return but to defer the payment and also do the same for the February and March PAYE. Now the good news is they have extended that to apply for the April returns as well. Um, and again, during, there's no interest being applied during this period for late payments, and there's also a deferral on enforcement action. And everyone's tax clearance 
um, status that was in place prior to um, the crisis that's deemed to be continued to be in place. Revenue also made uh, postponed the subcontractor RCT review in March, and they also made special arrangements in relation to customs to ensure goods kept coming in. So that was the revenue piece for you know this initial phase of, of saving your business and how we can access supports there. The next piece was the government encouraging banks to help with, with funding, um, and that really came in, in two ways. That was uh, temporary increases in, in, in overdrafts or emergency working capital or deferral of loan repayments, moratoriums for three months. Now, the evidence on the ground is in, in, in some cases, it's actually moratoriums for six months, particularly for certain sectors where maybe banks viewed, would view the, the closure or the reduced trade to be a little bit longer than that. Um, what we saw there is that the, there was a significant demand for the moratoriums and the working capital and um, you, you if you've applied you may have experienced um a backlog or a delay in getting it but i understand now the banks have worked through that and are processing most of these um requests and you should have gotten your letters at this stage and the feedback is that most companies that have asked for help have gotten the help so that's very encouraging I would also say that at this stage if you ha if you haven't applied for that assistance, but but you know it's not too late. You can do that, and I'd be encouraging people um, to to do that. You know, because basically what you really need to be doing is looking at how your business can survive. So saying how am I going to support my business for as long as possible, and, and access all available um, all available supports that are that are out there. The final piece of the support in the phase for saving your business is the deferral of local authority rates. These were deferred for three months up to the end of May. And again, I would encourage all businesses to, to make sure they apply for, for, for that deferral and get it. Um, some of you may have heard the accounting city manager, Michael Walsh on WLR this week, and he feels that a further update on rates and payment of rates will be made in the, in the coming weeks to give businesses clarity on what's expected. So that's really a summary of the supports that businesses should be looking at in, in the phase one. Um, as I said, we will be encouraging questions. So if there's any questions that people are, are putting through, we can take them now. I'd also say to people that if you've applied for some supports or any of the supports that we go through here, um, feedback your experience to us. Um, the Chamber, uh, True Chambers Ireland has a direct link into uh, Heather Humphreys, the minister. So if there's elements of the supports that don't work or you're frustrated about, let people know. So that, that will be pushed up the line and you know this will help uh, you know the government streamline their response and improve it to help you. Because that is really um, what they're saying their goal is at the moment. Um, I don't think there's any questions, Gerald, is there? No, not not at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll move on no. to phase. Sorry, two. Derek. No, no, we've nothing in yet. But I, I I still stress if anyone has any questions or if they'd like clarification on any part of the presentation so far, please just type in your uh, your question and we'll deal with it then. Thank you. Yeah, I mean one one of the common questions I get, particularly say around the temporary waste subsidy, is that scheme obviously came in at the end of March. People saying, am, am I too late to apply for that? Or if I if I don't need it um, for another couple of weeks, should I apply? Now the view is that scheme is open for twelve weeks. You can apply for any period during that twelve weeks, and you can apply for one week or the full twelve weeks. So it's not too late to access those supports. So we if we move on to the supports that are available in 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 phase two, which is the stabilisation. So really. What we're looking at now, and I think most businesses are probably here that they've dealt with the initial shock of the closure, and they're saying, "Well, how do I how do I plan now going forward?" Um, it's very important that you do plan because if you're looking to access any of the the grants or the supports that are available from government, there is an expectation that you will have a plan. So this is now the time to do it. Um, also, and um, we'll cover it off during during the discussion. Um, 
there will be significant demand for, for all of these supports and there already is significant demand for some of these supports. So get your applications in early, have your plan done, show people where you think your business will go um, and, and work on it now. My advice would be not to delay on that piece. Um, so in relation to phase two, what supports are available during the stabilization phase? Um, something I came across over the last week was there is guidance on how to continue to trade. So the National Standards Authority of Ireland have issued um, guidance in relation to workplace protection and improvement. And this is really a guide which outlines presentative measures businesses can take to provide the spread of COVID-19 while they're continuing to trade. The NSAI have also produced one for, for retail. So if you're a retailer and you are still trading or hoping to commence trading over the next few weeks but are not sure how you're going to manage social distancing, those guides are available. I might give you some, some sense of what you need to do going forward. Um, the Department of Transport, Tourism, Sport and the Department of Health together have also issued one for essential workers and supply chain workers that are there. So again, if your business is in that space, you, you may want to look at those guides to help you as to how you run your business and protect your employees going forward. Um, just a point the in relation to ongoing or during stabilization, probably something that may not be a priority, but just... You need, you need to be mindful of is if you're due to file any annual returns and um, the CRO has issued issue guidelines to help companies um, in relation to this and to support them during this period. So you might just be aware that that's there and available for you. Um, so moving on to what grants are available dur during this phase um, for your business. There is a significant number of grant supports. They're available primarily through Enterprise Ireland, the local enterprise office, and Board BIA. Just to say, in, in relation to Board BIA, they issued their COVID-19 uh, response, their, their supports, but that closing date was last Thursday the 16th. So at the moment, if you haven't applied, if you're a client of Board BIA or qualified to be a client of Board BIA and you haven't applied for that date, you'll have to wait until they, they, they reopen that. So if I look at just the number of grants at the moment, I'm gonna focus on what Enterprise Ireland are offering. The first one that may be of interest to people on the webinar is the COVID-19 retail online scheme. This is a two million fund. This is available for businesses employing in excess of 10 people. Um, this is already for indigenous retail businesses that have an online offering, but are looking to res respond to domestic or international demand and come up with a competitive offering there. Effectively, the support is up to 80% of the projects project costs with grants ranging from 10,000 to 40,000 euros and now Enterprise Ireland expects to, to support up to 60 retailers with this scheme so if you're looking at your business and want to further your online offering or need to support your online offering there, there's a grant that that is available and support is available to do that and a new grant that Enterprise Ireland has brought out is their business financial planning grant this is targeted at manufacturing or internationally traded services companies that employ 10 or more people. So again, if your business is an existing Enterprise Ireland client or if you feel you meet the criteria to qualify for that, um, th this grant is, is basically enabling um, companies to engage the services of an approved financial um, consultant to develop the plan, which can be used when applying to banks uh, for funding. The key features of this support is it's 100% funding up to 5,000 euros to access an approved financial consultant. So just bear in mind, whoever you might want to use must be approved by Enterprise Ireland. Um, the plan is effectively to help your, your company understand its immediate financial position and to secure finance that you may need to survive in the short to medium term. Um, so again, that, that's quite a helpful plan at the moment if you're looking at what your cash flow position is, what your deficit is, and where you might access support. Enterprise Ireland also, I think, will offer um, there's two other grants that if you're looking at, you know, you might need to reconfigure your production or if you're in manufacturing of your business uh, to deal with social distancing and, and the new guidelines that are going to come in. Um, there's a two and a half thousand lean business improvement grant. 
this effectively gives you access to three days with an uh, approved advisor or trainer to help you do that. It, it's for our businesses to help them uh, reconfigure their business to, to respond to this crisis or if you need to change your operations processes or look at re-engineering the way you manufacture your, your products. Um, they also have a similar one, which is the Lean Business Continuity Voucher. And this is effectively where you will get, you'll get advice online from a trainer about how, the, um, how you might manage your business going forward. Again, to allow you to respond to the crisis and um, to sustain your operations and to plan for resilience post, post the crisis. So, so they're the main grants that are available at the moment that, that your business, again, from Enterprise Ireland to help your business, be it online, um, be it for the financial planning, or to look at how you might uh, re-engineer your current production to, to help you go forward to deal with the new guidelines that are going to come into place. I'm going to move on now to the um, local enterprise office um, supports that are available. Um, and again, Richie, if you want to come in at any stage here, with your experience. The first one I'm going to talk to about is the online trading voucher. Um, this is a two and a half thousand uh, um, trading online voucher. Again, this is to help small businesses with up to 10 employees to boost their online sales and their sales in regional markets. Um, interesting about this support, it can be used, um, the funding can be used to add a payment facility or a booking facility to your website. So um, it also can be used to develop um, an app for your customer or also it will, can be used towards subscriptions for low cost online retail platforms. Like so really if you don't have anything set up, it can help you get set up quickly. Um, so again, if, if you need to pivot your business online um, to generate income during the crisis or if you see going forward to cope with the new social distancing guidelines, this this uh, grant is available, this voucher is available to help you support on that. Um, uh, sorry, Jerry, can I just take, uh, just yeah. here, I, I have one uh, observation here that I've actually experienced it myself now. Uh, seemingly only half the screen uh, can be seen. Can you stro scroll down to the rest of that document? Uh, only we're, it's been cut off just at- Oh yeah, the okay, sorry. Now, yeah, that's how's that? Yeah. Yeah, if, if you're going through, maybe if you're, whatever you're going through, that, that people would be able to see it themselves. That would be great. Thanks very much for that. And actually, Derek, just as I'm on there, okay. I think it really, as I mentioned before, no problem. Uh, I've had a question, and I think the two of them are kind of related. Uh, thanks, Derek. What's the guide again for retailers? That was the question. Did you mention that? Okay, yeah, so that, that's the... NSAI, the, the, the National Standards uh, Authority in Ireland, have issued a guide for retailers to help them train. So if you go onto the NSAI, NSAI website, that guide is there. Uh, and it is, it is, um, it's a published a guide to help retailers manage business continuity during the crisis. Yeah, great. And, and just, I'll just add to that, Derek, um, uh, I see retail excellence have just come up with uh, a new a, a new guideline today. So I'll get uh, I, I'll get our own people to put that up on the website. So if anyone wants to log in later on, they'll see more from uh, retail excellence. Perfect. I I think it's important to to note that look there there is plenty of like even non financial supports like those guides out there for people you know who might have lots of questions and um, because let's face it. Our businesses are all going to be different into the future, and, and we may not have all the answers. So there, there is a lot, a, there is a significant amount of support there to help us try and plan through even managing the basic of how do I operate um, go, going forward. So I would encourage people to to to, to take that up. Um, okay, so look, I, I'm going to continue on around what's available from from Leo in terms of grants. Um, so we spoke about the online trading voucher. Um, the next one I'd like to talk about, which is a new one, is the business continuity voucher. And this is basically a support. Again, it's available across every sector for any business that employs up to 50 people um, to help them access third-party consultancy to develop a plan. We've already spoke about the importance of developing a plan. Um, and effectively, you know, this is to help business owners make informed decisions about what immediate measures and action they have to take to protect their staff and sales. And there is up to eight 
headings under which you can use this voucher to develop your plan. And um, the first one is to develop a business continuity plan. The second one is to uh, assess your current financial needs in the short to medium term. The third one would be to reduce variable costs, overheads and expenses. The fourth one is to review and supl explore supply chain financing. The fifth one would be to implement remote working procedures. Um, the sixth one is to leverage HR expertise. The next one would be to leverage ICT expertise. And then the last one would be to, bear, to prepare a business case for applications um, for funding to your bank, the SBCI or Microfinance Ireland. So there is a, a very wide uh, scope here for you to get help and financial assistance to apply uh, to employ the appropriate people to help you develop a plan. Um, and I think, uh, Richie, the take up from what I've seen, I have a number of clients have come with their uh, approvals. Approvals seem to be happening very quickly and the take up would appear to be um, significant at the start of this. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks a million, um, Derek. I mean, simple to it is, the business continuity voucher is a short, sharp uh, capability uh, not available to the client company themselves. But uh, directly to a, a, a consultant to help them to to do uh, do what needs to be done. Now, to be quite honest with you, the two criteria that we are using primarily to determine um, the, the value of uh, of these to any given client company are the two post uh, the, the two uh, headings, which are the first one and the last one that you spoke about there, which are really uh, the development of a business continuity plan or a business recovery plan, if you want to call it that, so that when the time comes over the next short while, hopefully, people are ready to kick back into action and take significant actions to, to put themselves back out into the marketplace and, and, and operating um, as near to full uh, as possible. And the second one then is, 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 is the is the last one that you mentioned really, which is about uh, I, I suppose a bit of strategic change within the firm. But look, the bottom line is, uh, we're getting a lot of these business continuity vouchers applications in. They're being checked and they're moved as quickly as we possibly can. And we're trying to turn them around in the space of two days um, so that people can get on and, and uh, do the stuff. Now, at the moment, we're, 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 we're tight on resources to be able to administer them. But, but you know, uh, we're still sticking to the two days in as much as we can. Um, just going back very briefly to the... To the trading online vouchers, uh, one issue that's been coming up um, with trading online vouchers is, is there's there is a training element that's associated with that, and is and it's an obligatory part of that. But uh, generally speaking, there are webinars uh, of a national nature being being run throughout the country at the moment. So, if you're not, we have a couple of web, uh, webinars ourselves and training regimes coming up but if you can't get on those look into a, the wider national scheme of things and if you can get on to any other one then you qualify for the voucher so at the moment it's all about responsiveness it's trying to do something as well as possible as quickly as possible um, and to give those supports but the simple truth of it is the business continuity voucher may be seen as an awful lot of consultants as some kind of an opportunity to get easy cash. It's not meant to be that. At the end of the day, if it doesn't genuinely add real value to the client's potential future of shifting things around, then it will not be will not be granted. But it's a very good shot once of two. Uh, and we're delighted with the uptake and the, the, set, and the level of applications to it. Sorry, uh, Richie, I just have a, a query here in from Dennis, and he says, for Leo online trading voucher during COVID-19, are Leo Waterford looking for three quotes and to attend workshop before giving a go-ahead for the funding? Uh, if I wasn't on public uh, uh, airwaves here, I think I'd say something uh, softer than I'll say. We'll be very judicious and we'll be very responsive and we'll be very quick. And sometimes the seeking of, of, of quotations doesn't mean necessarily the getting of them. So really that clear? recommending people would, should contact the Leo themselves just to get confirmation. Yeah, look, look there is an obligation to get three quotes. You yeah. know what, if we see a good quote in from a reputable company and uh, prove that uh, someone sought another two, but perhaps they didn't get them, we, we'll be, we'll be uh, approving that as quickly as possible. That's very clear. Thank you.
Yeah. And I think just following up from Richie's point, I would say to companies that if you're looking to access the, the voucher, I mean, this is effectively you know, where, where you can get an element of work done and the consultant, whoever you use for whatever reason, is paid for by, by through the LEO, by, by the government. So be very clear in what you want in your plan. There's eight, there's eight headlines as to what you, you know, qualifies for the expenditure. So, you know, you may be looking at bringing your staff back and saying, well, I have to put in social distancing guidelines. You may need HR. So, you know, to get the bang for your buck, you be very clear in what you want. And and then you know pick the, the the person or the consultant that that you want to, to use. What we're seeing is demand from clients um, around that whole financial planning, um, doing cash flows, doing scenario analysis because nobody knows am I going to be back at fifty percent turnover by December? You know, will it be higher? Will it be lower? What's my break even position? And then if I have a deficit, how can I get the funding? So so they're the ones and and any clients we've spoke to. Have been very definite. That that's what they want. That qualifies under 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 the scheme, and that, and that's what they're going to get uh, if they deliver on that. But you can have three or four elements of it as well. You might want some financial planning, some HR, some ICT. So once you can you know, agree that as part of, of of the voucher, that can be done. And I think George, you're seeing a little bit of that um, requests coming in for a number of services under the voucher. Yeah, absolutely. It and it's so diverse. Uh... And, and, and we're delighted to have the opportunity to, to assist the LEO in, in this. And it's, it's certainly, um, we, we're, we're trying to assist our members in any way we can in, in getting a robust uh, continuity plan for the business uh, in place. And we're in the fortunate position that we can call on the many skills and, uh, and uh, that are available to us through our membership. So uh, we're happy to assist wherever we can. And actually, the 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 requests are quite diverse. From even yesterday, we had we had an architectural request, uh, a proposal for uh, for a particular premises that they had to to uh, to try and develop a, a sustainable pension plan out of their existing premises, but it required a consultation from an architect. Uh, so it's it's so really whatever issues that people have to. Uh, to save their business and 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 to sustain their business uh, uh, during and and after after COVID nineteen, uh, that's 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 what that that plan is there to assist. Okay, so just gonna I'm gonna just move on. Um, again, just another another grant that's there is the the lean from micro that's available through the Leo as well, um, and this effectively can be used to implement new remote working or physical distance guidelines in your business. And again, this gives you access to expertise that you might need if you need to make changes in your business. Um, so that's really, I mean, also to say that all the existing supports that the LEO provide are still there and still available. So but, uh, if, really, if I might just, if I see hmm. just uh, briefly, sorry, and I noticed that um, um, Bill uh, pre uh, prefixed this whole uh, uh, discussion here today uh, talking about free money, and obviously cash is very important. So, but the one thing that we are finding is the services that we are offering at the moment, the really bespoke services that we are offering that are most in demand, most appreciated, are actually non-cash services, uh, but that are our mentoring services. Uh, they're free and they're bespoke and they're concentrated in the key areas of HR. Um, financial management, including cash flow stuff, and in um, e-commerce, uh, along with. So listen, we know the small businesses really, really need a deal to listen to them. So the mentoring stuff is desperately important from our viewpoint, and we and we just don't want to get it buried underneath all the other things. Um, and sorry, Richie, can I just ask you a question there, which has come in from Patricia. Uh, is health and safety consultancy uh, covered in the business continuity voucher? If it is COVID driven, uh, what I mean by that is if, you're, if there's health and safety consultancy that should have been done six months ago or should be done in the ordinary course of an annual year, or whatever, then that's not covered. But if for the sake of argument, health and safety consultancy needed to be brought in to change the business around physically or otherwise in order to accommodate uh, potential COVID-19 post-crisis phase, then that's coverable. You know, so it's, it's a very valid uh, uh, application. 
No, and, and that's and that's very clear. Thanks. Okay, so I'm just gonna we're gonna just move on. We're into the, the like the final phase, which of, of the supports, and this is really around um, you know gr growing your business or getting to retrade and restarting from here. So this primarily is going to be focused on what is the government um, available funding schemes, and again, these are primarily through Microfinance Ireland, the uh, the SBCI who have three schemes and um, Enterprise Ireland. So if we just talk about the Microfinance Ireland scheme, um, it's loans, and it's interesting, when we did the article, um, the details of the scheme, which I'll just uh, go up so people can see, that's actually changed in the last couple of weeks. So the government have updated this uh, scheme. The interest rate is now between 4.5% uh, if you apply through a LEO, if you apply through Microfinance Ireland, Finance Ireland directly, it's, it's actually more expensive. It's up to 5%. So obviously they want to encourage everyone to apply for this scheme through the Leo. This fund has been increased from 13 million to 50 million, and it's for loans of up to 50,000 euros. Um, this fund is really for companies, micro enterprises, so less than 10 employees, who are having difficulty accessing bank support, who've been negatively impacted by COVID-19, where your turnover has fallen by 15% or is projected to fall by 15% or more. Um, the key elements of it are, it's between loans of 5,000 and 50,000 euros. The loans can be used for working capital or to recover uh, required business changes as a result of the crisis. They're up, their terms are up to three years long, the loan. Um, the first six months can be in, in, interest free, interest only with the rest of the loan repaid over 30 months and there's no security required and there is no uh, early repayments if you decide to repay the loan early. Um, the next suite of funding supports are the ones I'm going to talk to are the ones available through the SBCI. So so they now have three schemes. Um, they have the COVID-19 working capital loan scheme which is effectively the SBCI have repurposed um, their Brexit loan scheme. So under this loan scheme, there is loans available between 25,000 and 1.5 million. The first 50,000 euros, um, or, or sorry, 500,000 euros is available unsecured and the interest rate is 4%. Um, there is also an interest only period available at the start of these loans. But I suppose bear in mind this is a loan, so you have to demonstrate capacity to, to repay the loan back. So effectively what people will be looking at there is before the crisis, did you have sufficient cash flow to, to repay, repay the loan you might be applying for? And how quickly post the crisis will you get back to a level where you can demonstrate repayment capacity on the loan? Um, you have to apply through a pillar bank, so you have to apply through AIB, Bank of Ireland, or Ulster Bank, and you have to go through their, their loan application process. Um, just to point out, there's two elements to this to scheme um, to qualify. So if you go on, if you log on, the first phase is you have to tick uh, eligibility criteria on the SBCI website. Um, you have to qualify under the fact that your business is the impact is by the crisis, which I think every business will qualify. But there is a second part. There, there is you have to take one of eleven criteria under an innovation heading. Now, they will look for documentary evidence. And um, when you take online and get your approval, you're certifying that you can you can satisfy the innovation criteria, and that's around entering a new market, a new product, or that a certain level of your spend every year is spent on R and D. But to get the loan, you're going to have to certify that that was the case. So you might have to get a letter from your accountant or backup documentation supporting that. So just be, be conscious before you apply that you're happy you can meet the terms. Now, most people will, will probably say that's a bit of a strange um, condition to have on a working capital loan. But remember, this was a quick response. They've repurposed the Brexit loan, which is for a different crisis. It was for the Brexit crisis. So I know the SBCI are looking at at this and they may change it but at the moment if you are applying just bear that in mind and um, i was on a webinar this week where nick ashmore the ceo of the sbci was on uh, and under this scheme they've already approved 1100 applications 
So demand is high for this this scheme. So same to any company. If you're if you think you need it, um, start looking at the application uh, process immediately um, and get in because it is it is a 450 million fund. But then you're depending on a new fund if if, if this gets full and, and goes through. The second scheme available from the SBCI is their existing credit guarantee scheme. Now this has been in existence since 2018. This is set up to really address three barriers uh, to lending. Um, so if your business is looking for a loan, but you have in that in a new business idea or technology, which is perceived to be by the finance provider to be high risk, um, or traditionally why this was set up in 2018 was to help SMEs who, who needed to refinance if their funder had left left the market. The key features of this guarantee is that it, it covers facilities from 10,000 euros up to a million. It's for a duration of seven years and it covers a multitude of products, be it term loans, demand loans or performance bonds. Um, the point to make in this scheme is there's an additional charge of 0.5% on the amount to pay for the guarantee. But again, if, if, if you're looking at needing to borrow, want to go longer term than the COVID working capital scheme, the COVID working capital scheme is three years, you want to go seven years, this guarantee scheme could help you structure the request so you could get the, get the um, approval that you need. And then lastly, the, the, the last scheme that the SBCI are running at the moment is the future growth loan scheme. Um, again, loans from 100,000 up to 3 million are available. Interest rates vary between 35 and 4%. Um, the term of this loan is between 8 and 10 years. So, so it's a longer term loan. Um, and again, unsecured up to half a million euros and interest only options are available. Um, applications for loans greater than 250,000 must be accompanied by a business plan submitted to the financial institution. And again, for this scheme, you have to apply to one of AIB, Bank of Ireland or Ulster Bank. However, there there is six very um, specific purposes of this loan scheme. Um, you can apply if you're looking to invest in machinery or equipment, in research or development, in business expansion, business improvements, uh, premises improvements, process innovation, or people or systems. So that's quite broad. Um, again, on the webinar this week, Nick Ashmore said they haven't seen a lot of demand at the moment for this facility, but what they feel is as soon as businesses get back up and running and are looking at the future, there'll be increased demand in relation to, to this facility. Again, just to say th there is restrictions um, on activities such as real estate development and export operations. Or unfortunately, if your business was already in financial difficulty before the crisis, you won't be able to apply for any of the SBCI schemes because both the COVID-19 scheme and the future growth scheme um, is not designed to lend to businesses that are already in financial difficulty. Um, there's, a, there's a query there, that they balance in, uh, I'll, I'll send it out again, uh, in respect of the loan period. The SPI loan period is from one to three years. Is that correct? Or what? Yes, yeah, so the COVID-19 working capital scheme is between one to three years, so it's a maximum of three years. And again, I, I suppose, just to bear in mind, that's the reworking of the Brexit loan scheme. So the Brexit loan scheme was initially designed for one to three years, and they've basically taken that fund and created it in a very short timeline the COVID-19 working capital scheme. So, so yes, um, the obvious point to make there is the, the term on that loan scheme is very short. Um, so again, you'd want to be happy. You will probably get between six and 12 months interest only, but you'd want, you'd want to be happy that your business can generate sufficient cash flow to repay that debt uh, over that period of time. And you have to be able to show your, the ability of your business to repay that debt go, going forward. Um, so that's why the future loan growth scheme, which is between eight and 10 years, might be more suitable for your business, depending on your requirements and what you need there. Um, lastly, then, is I want to talk about the new, it's a new fund from Enterprise Ireland, and this is the Sustaining Enterprise Fund. This is a fund of 180 million, which has been provided under uh, the EU framework support. Um, 
it is effectively offering advances, repayable advances of up to 800,000 for businesses. So, so this is a grant, not a loan, um, is the first point to say on this. Um, this is effectively to help companies, again, if you've been impacted by a loss in turnover, our profits by 15% as a result of the crisis. Um, now, just to point out the eligibility criteria on this, this fund, you must employ 10 or more full-time employees. Again, it's Enterprise Ireland Fund, so it's for manufacturing or internationally traded services. So it's both for existing Enterprise Ireland clients, but you can also apply if you meet the criteria and you're not already an Enterprise Ireland client. Um, but for SMEs, you already have to have applied and been turned down for funding through an institution, a financial institution, or the SBCI. So you have to have applied for either the working capital or the future growth scheme. Um, or if you're a larger business, you have to have applied for a to a financial institution for funding and have been turned down. Um, and effectively, the, the elements of the fund are it's funding of up to eight hundred thousand euros. It's to, the funding would be repaid subject to project objectives being achieved. There's an, an annual administration fee of 4% on this fund. Um, there's a, on terms of repayment, there's a three year grace period on the repayment and the repayment is due by the end of year five on successful achievement of the project. So you have to be, this is really to support viable but vulnerable businesses. So they're giving you the opportunity to, to, to invest in the project and it's only repayable if, if that is successful. The one drawback I see with this fund is you have to have applied for funding and have been turned down. So from a timing point of view, realistically, if you're applying for funding, you're probably two to three months having gone through the process to get to a, a decline and then you apply. So there might be people might be a little bit frustrated with the length of time it's going to take them to access this fund. So again, the advice would be access it early. Uh, if you think if you don't think your business would qualify for some of the funding schemes through the SBCI or Microfinance Ireland and um, apply so you can move on to apply for the Enterprise Ireland Sustaining Business Fund. So that's kind of the 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 various supports that are available at the various different different phases. And um, I would say to 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 companies, you know, try and apply for as many supports as possible. This is the government's initial um, initial response. It was interesting to see uh, an article in the Irish Times this morning saying that for business they believe various supports of up to seven billion. So so this is about a billion of supports. A little bit more they actually think that figure will grow to seven billion so the anticipation is that more supports would would come interestingly enough um nick ashmore of the sbci said they're looking at where businesses because you're not trading at the moment there's probably a build-up of debt you know you may have revenue debt um, you probably have a deferral on your rates. You probably have bank payments you haven't made. So there's during the crisis, as, as businesses can't trade, there's a buildup of short-term debt. And the SBCI are looking at a scheme that might help you pay that over a much longer term. So that's something I'd expect to see being developed in the coming weeks to help businesses going forward. Um, so again, if there's any questions, Gerald, I'm happy to go through them at the moment. I might just point the questions might be coming in. Um, uh, Derek, I, I might add to what you just said there. Um, I mean, simple truth of it is, uh, at the present moment in time, government is, is not averse to doing whatever it is needed to do in order to sort of sustain and to turn around the business capability. Um, whether, you know, what, what in the longer term it will be able to afford to do is another question. The one thing that I would... I would hate to think uh, is that uh, also agencies would not at least be as responsible as we possibly can be to the demands of the business community and to try and work with them. Uh, certainly, um, heading around the corner, which we hope all will be in the not too distant future, uh, the one thing that we would certainly see uh, that is required in Waterford is a huge collaborative effort of everybody working together genuinely for the good of the city and for the county, uh, us working with uh, the chambers and with all the other enterprise support agencies with enterprise island and with industry and, 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 and the enterprise community out there. 
uh, and it's only through that that we can maybe, I don't know, maybe even build ourselves a better business environment. But even certain things at the moment, just you spoke, uh, Derek, a second ago about uh, slowness in take up of certain things. I can totally understand them. Like, for instance, the, uh, the microfinance uh, Ireland uh, uh, loans, small, small loan scheme, um, take up in my mind has been quite slow, but I can totally understand it from the point of view that businesses are very reluctant to take on further debt. Uh, having said that, as you said a second ago, I need to start turning the corners here. I think that businesses should really look at things like that because it gives um, um, working capital free uh, of, of interest and free of repayments for a six-month period. And I think that could be critical in turning somebody around from being a uh, stop go start to actually be able to go ahead and do it. So I think it's very important to look at these schemes, be ready to go with them, um, and, and certainly be ready to go when the time comes. Um, so, you know, they're there to help everybody. You're right. Look at them, examine them, and certainly prepare yourself. Absolutely. And I think, Richard, just as a follow-up, um, the Department of Enterprise, uh, Department of Business, Enterprise and Innovation have a COVID-19 response guide. Um, I'm just going to share that with people just so they can see. Um, for me, this is really your, your go-to. You can see it there. You'll get it on the website. Um, it's their supports for businesses. So it goes through everything I've spoken about in detail and the websites and how to access it. So I'd really, um, to help people frame their thoughts about where going forward, you know, that's worth a read or that's worth having as a reference guide. Um, it's there, it does, it covers all the supports that are available at the moment. Um, as you keep saying, there is significant supports out there and I would encourage people, don't be, don't be shy and asking for the help, you know, as we said, government, state agencies, all, all sort, every other um, kind of a body, chambers, etc., all want to help everyone get through this. So we all get through this together and come out the other side. So access the support and help, it is there. There is a significant amount of government funding available to help businesses through this. Don't be shy in taking it up. But most importantly, you know, act now, have a plan in place. There's supports to help you put that plan in place. So, so don't wait. Um, we won't know for sure when industry will reopen, you know, it'll probably be staggered, but but no business has clear view on when they're going to be up and running and when they're going to get back to what they consider to be normal trading levels. So plan as best you can, keep reviewing and assessing the plan. So uh, look, Derek and Richie, uh, thank you very much for a very informative webinar and I'm getting some compliments in here already. So thank, thank you very much for that. And as always, uh, this webinar has been recorded. Uh, it will be broadcast from tomorrow on or it will be available on our website uh, from tomorrow and any questions maybe on reviewing that or indeed the, the document that you've just highlighted here, if there's any questions that spring to mind after that, uh, please feel free to get in touch and, and, and we'll, we'll get them uh, answered for you. So uh, thank you very much and uh, stay safe, uh, stay well and stay connected. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.